Uh, we're going to draw two names, but please pick those up on your way out um, after the show, okay? Whoever wins. <laughs> I'll pick. You got your glasses? Oh, good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you got to see it because I can't. First winner is Lois Ackletree. Yay! You know, as the winners really should buy a whole bunch of tickets for that golf cart that we're giving away. <laughs> okay, here's another one. Bar R. Bar oh, oh, there we go. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, now I want you to sit back. You want me to what? take that back? Becky. Oh, okay. Phones. Yes. Yes. Phones. Phones. Oh, yes. Uh, okay. <laughs> Honey coffee always <laughs> reminds me that you have to turn off your phone. So please do that. Turn off the sound. Okay. Here's your Stephen Hot Cup of Coffee Man. Refreshing blend of hospitality and respect. 
They even allow pets. Woo! That sounds awfully refreshing. <laughs> well, here you can't miss it. It's just down on the corner. You go across the street. Blue shutters. It's just a darling little place. Well, hello, bud. Hi, Miss D. Hi, Star. Star bright, star bright. The only star you think of at night. <laughs> Hi, bud. Barb, I think you deserve another friend here in Waterpit. Barb Wire, meet Buck Braun, a helping hand in these parts. And he was voted last year as Waterpit's most eligible cowboy. <laughs> Hi, Miss Barb. Nice meeting you. Welcome to our town. Why, thank you. My pleasure. If you'll excuse me, I'm going to go check out Maxwell, see if I can find me a temporary home. I'm going to jump on Java and head back to the sweet one. Get back to work. Nice right. meeting you. Good luck to you. Thank you. Well, what can we do for you, bud? I have to ask. You're awfully perceptive, Aunt D. I thought I'd just come on in and have another cup of your fine coffee. Though, come eat my cup of tea. I'm to see my star bright. <laughs> Here you go, Buck. Just the way you like it. He never likes it strong and black. Sometimes I wonder if I'm making this man the cup of coffee he deserves. Thanks, Star. Just the way I like it. We appreciate your business, Buck. Yeah, in fact, you come in here six times today. You were here just over an hour ago. Well, shucks, man. You can never have tea because of your fine coffee. No coffee ain't my cup of tea. I drink so much coffee during the day, toss and turn on my horse all day, and then I go and lie awake and think of star at night. Now, if you youngins will excuse me, I don't mean to be rude, but I need to get on back and inventory my coffee beans. That stagecoach is due any time now, and I want to be ready for the rush. <laughs> oh no, is everything okay? I didn't make you a poor cup of coffee, did I? Oh, no. It's perfect. So perfect, in fact, your business must be booming. Alas, business has been considerably slow lately, ever since this man named Mo Cabana brought his coffee cart into town. I just can't imagine you having a slow day. Pony Espresso has always had the nicest atmosphere, the best coffee, and star. Surprisingly, Mr. Cabana can afford to sell his coffee for only two cents. We don't know how he does it and stay in business. We can't compete at that cost and cover our own overhead. <sighs> I just don't know what our bit we would do if our business were to fail. Auntie and I, we have a couple of cents saved to our name, but we, we want to put it toward the wash and wear bearskin rug. It's something she's always dreamed of having. I just hate to see Star suffering. Don't worry, Star. The Pony Espresso has always had the most dedicated customers. Shoot, you know me. I'd never go anywhere for my cup of coffee. So, where are all the other customers? Unfortunately, most of our regulars have, fun have been falling ill. What an incredibly strong man. He's staying healthy in a world full of sickness and poor health. <laughs> in fact, Clark was just telling us that both of Master Blend's ranch Illness has struck both of Master Blend's ranch hands. Well, has he tried any lotion on his hands? I need the help on his ranch. Phil Turr and Rusty Pot. Well, I'd sure like to help, Master. But my day is already full. How so? Well, Dunkin' Donuts got me rounding up cattle down there at the hole-in-one ranch. It's a full-time job. But, 
Maybe I can work at night, see if I can solve this mystery for you. I'm up anyway. Why, wow, that would be wonderful. How brave, how valiant, how courageous. Shuck start. It ain't nothing to face a mysterious illness. Could this be my time to speak of love? <laughs> <laughs> Yes, not. <laughs> Hello, Mayor Pompey. How may I help you today? I'm sorry, Star. I'm not here to relax. I'm here to warn the both of you. <coughs> Another person has fallen ill in our fine community. Oh, no. Who? My wife, Honey. <gasps> she suddenly dropped ill. She got all dizzy. She turned green as a frog. And, well, I thought she was going to croak. Andy, come quickly. What is all the commotion on out here? It's Mayor Poppy's wife, Honey. She's been struck down by the mysterious illness. Oh my, is she going to be all right? Well, I don't know. I don't know. Dr. Pappuccino's still out at the Blend Ranch. I hope he gets back pretty soon. Ah, this is terrible. The entire town is in an uproar, and as mayor, part of my phony baloney job is to keep things under control. And with an election coming up, this is going to kill my chances for re-election. Sometimes I feel like I'm twitching at the bottom of the ocean. <laughs> my goodness, you are a nervous wreck. Get it? Twitching at the bottom of the ocean? Nervous wreck? <laughs> <laughs> but Mayor, I thought you were the only one running for election. Oh, not anymore. Well, combat is on the ballot. And with this mysterious illness running through town, you can bet people are going to blame me if I don't handle it right. Well, the fact that people are falling ill and Doc Cappuccino can't figure out ain't your fault. Huh. Doc has tried to think of everything. Why, he even has suggested it might be foul play. No, that's frightening. Well, what does Sheriff Galston have to say about all this? Oh, Sheriff Galston, that moron. I had to give him two weeks off with paid vacation to get him away from the stress and strain of his job. Well, what was happening to him? Well, last week he told me a three-legged dog walked into his office. <laughs> what, wait, what's wrong with that? Well, there's nothing wrong with that, except he said the dog started talking to him, said he was looking for who shot his paw. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, when a sheriff starts going cuckoo on you like that, you got to get him away from the job. But how was I to know everything would go wrong at one time? And now here we are, the town of Water Pit, we're without a man of the law. Is there anybody who could take his place? A strong, confident man. Somebody brave and bold. We all know who fits those descriptive words. Why, but do you think that you could... Don't worry, y'all. Mayor Coffee, swear me in. All right, Buck, I will. Raise your right hand. Your right hand. Now, you swear to uphold the law of water, Pip? I do. All right. Mighty hero. Okay. Well, in that case, I bestow upon you the title of the uh, temporary sheriff. <laughs> As temporary sheriff, I vow to find a reason behind this mysterious illness. I will immediately go tell Mr. Donut that I am now temporary sheriff. And I'll be taking a short leave of absence. Star, I sure hope we can talk more when our town's not in the midst of chaos. Buck, I would talk with you anytime, anywhere. Anyway, I know that you have the ability to solve this mysterious problem, and as always, thank you for your continued patronage of the Pony Expresso. <laughs> Oh, 
slow right now. Well, that's good, but you know, normally I take care of them myself, but quite frankly, those two have made me pretty nervous lately. Why? Well, Doc Cappuccino says they're paranoia. <laughs> but I'm sure I'm gonna feel a lot better when their mother's back on her feet. When would you like us to start? <laughs> right now! Sugar! Spice! The coffee base! Sugar, the sweet one. And Spice, good taste in everything she does. Hello, children. Hello, Miss Bright. Hello, Miss Calf. Hello, girls. Your dad would like you to stay here with us while he's out there working on some big problems. Can we please have a first cup of coffee while you're gone? Please, pretty please, with sugar on top. Mm, oh, sugar on top? I don't, I don't think you want to put sugar on top. She might get burned. <laughs> and you girls, you're quite young yet to have a taste of coffee. Maybe after a few more years in the Wild West, I'll let you have your first taste. They grow up so fast. <laughs> Don't worry, girls. There's plenty of things we can do around here. We can play outside. Goody, goody. All right. Now, <laughs> children, your daddy has to go take care of that problem. So I want you to behave yourself, okay? And thank you. Thank you very much for helping me out. Why, certainly, Mayor Coffee. You have such beautiful children, though it is sometimes hard to tell them apart. Oh. <laughs> With this nasty illness going around town, it's important that these children remain in a safe environment. That's right. Kids, behave yourself! We will, Daddy. It's time to play! <laughs> Yay! Well, how about horseshoes? Wow, I love playing horseshoes. Well, great. Well, Miss Bright and I put out the stakes. You girls can take the shoes off of our horse with Smith. <laughs> Isn't that dangerous? Can you get kicked? Oh, don't worry. Swiss Miss is a stable animal. <laughs> Why, the color of chocolate, of course. Come on, let's go outside and meet her. Well, I hate to interrupt this incredible moment in the little girl's lives, but we got important business matters to discuss. 
Her hat, Fifi, can escort the little tights over to, to the ice cream shop. My, my treat, of course. Oh, but me? Oh, take Sam close the ice cream? Oh, of course. Remember how much you love little children? Here's your chance to treat two precious little girls who just played a rugby game of horseshoes to an ice cream sundae. Oh, but this is Saturday. <laughs> then get them an ice cream Saturday. But more importantly, get them ice cream now. If she continues to be an imbecile, I'll have to ask her to stop helping me. Mr. Cabana, though you seem rather resistant about this matter, I promised the children a piece of beef jerky. They're both really deserving. Then they could have beef jerky ice cream. Please let us go, Miss Bright. Ice cream sounds really yummy. Please, please, please. please. <laughs> well, alright, fine. Just a quick trip to the ice cream shop at that. I would go with the girls, but somebody has to stay here and watch the shop while Aunt Dee continues to put the horseshoes on Swiss Miss. Then we mustn't waste time! Let's go, girls! Let's go! Have a wonderful treat! In fact, take your time! Ah, my sweet, now we are going to talk business. I'll oh, you feel uncomfortable talking about business with you without my auntie here. Come now, my dear. We would not want to interrupt her important task, and it's nothing big. Well, all right. So what would you like to talk about? Well, we're both involved with coffee. Yes, go on. And you must admit, selling coffee has its perks. <laughs> and I'm fortunate enough, my business is thriving. So then, what brings you here? It's certainly not a cup of coffee. I'm sure my successful endeavor is draining you, my dear. Not to hurt your feelings or be offensive, but your coffee house doesn't stand a chance against my heart. I'm sure you've noticed my low prices are capturing your customers, so it's easy to assume you'd be interested in selling your business to me. Mr. Cabana, Auntie and I would never sell out. The coffee business is a stimulating profession for Auntie and I. I realize that coffee has been the grounds of a many heated discussion, but come, my dear, when you want to get something out of your failing business before you lose everything? Auntie and I have enough money saved away that we could fight you for months. Perhaps I can convince her to marry me. That'd mean a profitable merger in more ways than one. Perhaps we can be better acquainted and merge our two businesses together. I'm sure that once we get to know each other, you will see it's mutually beneficial with me being the next mayor of Waterbit. Who can doubt I'm Waterbit's man of the future? Mr. Cabana, I can never work with you, let alone vote for you. You are nothing but a despicable individual who will never be mayor of Waterbit. I don't see why you call me a despicable individual cost of this town a fortune. My dear, I stand on my record. So nobody can see it. Miss Bryant, I'd like to give you a scrumptious kiss. Not only will this convince you to vote for me, but show that we are made for each other like coffee beans and water. Stay away from me, sir. You're already in enough hot water. Let me have a kiss from those lovely lips. Never! I would never kiss a man with such an ugly mug. Perhaps you'd rather have a cup of coffee. This cup of coffee's been sitting here since I got here. It's probably cold and bitter, as opposed to your kisses, which I'm sure are warm and sweet. Just one kiss and I'll be on my way! Never! I would never kiss a man with a little business and little techniques like you. Trying to solve this community crisis. This is an outrage! 
You should arrest her. When she spilled coffee on my shirt, she showed me disdain. <laughs> disdain. <laughs> disdain. Wait a minute, you guys like it. And the stain may never come out, Mr. Cabana, and you can link that on your inappropriate advances. Mo Cabana, you leave here at once. You are no longer welcome at the Pony Espresso. Get! Get! <laughs> Sugar, spice, thick one is your back. And you, you as well, you are no longer allowed at the Pony Espresso. What did I do? I only took the Pony Ice Cream Saturday. What's the scoop? You are associated with this group. Yeah, what a mess. None of your business, you unsightly roommates. <laughs> I see you young cute. I think when they were born, the stork was fired. Hold your tongue, you Might as well. Your political career is already over. I think you will all regret this interference, I assure you. I will get my hands on the Pony Express so one way or another. Malcolm Manor never backs away when it comes to his affairs! <laughs> These two vagabonds were just leaving. Both the vagabonds shall return! Goodbye, little sweethearts. <laughs> Andy, Star, I got a funny feeling about them too. I see you, I'd stay away from them. Don't worry, Bob. I'm sure we'll be okay with you as our temporary sheriff. <laughs> I am sorry, Mayor, but this one is out of wild territory. These people are being poisoned, and unless I can trace the source of the poison, we will just have to wait this one out. Just make sure they're comfortable. Have you ever seen anything so mysterious? I once had a man come to me and say that he was shrinking. What did you do? Well, there's nothing I could do. I told him he'd have to be a little patient. <laughs> <laughs> this one here is mighty mysterious. I think that there's someone behind it. Wait a minute. You don't think it could be, uh... I do. I think it's foul play. Foul play? I find out who's doing this, I'll throw him in jail. What? What would be the charge? Well, no charge. Getting into jail is free. <laughs> <laughs> so, Palomino, to what do we owe this visit? Two dollars and pony overnight express. Wow, a real pony express rider? We've never been this close to one. She sounds like a pony. How's that? She's a little... <laughs> but you two are around horses all day. There's always horses on Main Street. <laughs> True, the horses on a ranch like playing with Capanna are always on the ranch like playing with the pigs. Why? I guess they're like being neighbors. <laughs> it must be nice to live on a ranch with all that horse fatality. <laughs> to live a life like that. Now, what did you do before you wrote for the Pony Express? Oh, gee, let me tell ya. I first opened a riding academy, but business just kept falling off. <laughs> <laughs> and then the horses, they'd hide behind trees to change their jockeys. <laughs>
really bad cold. What'd you give him? Cough stirrup. <laughs>
I was hoping for a cup of coffee after being out in that hot sun all day, but I can settle for some ice cream. Well, all right then. Let's go, everybody. You check the door, door, and I'll take the back door. With so many mysterious things happening in the town of Water Pit, we don't want to take any chances. Sure, come on. personal financial empire. Both for making a lot of money. She had greatness thrust upon her. She asked if we came with directions. <laughs> well, are you going to do anything? Well, I can't mess around with the U.S. government or an entire railroad. But I am up for that type of challenge. Well, no. This may be our time to forget the life of crime. We could start our own little coffee shop. We could work for a living. What? Where did you come up with that idiotic idea? Work is the most ridiculous way of making money. <laughs> His name could be Theory since it never works. Well, the little twins made me realize that an honest family life may not be the bad. Curses. She's getting as soft as a marshmallow and hot chocolate. I've got to watch my step around her. Ridiculous! Selling coffee's the daily grind. It's the money from the railroad that'll make us rich. Most of all, make me rich. Give us the life of luxury. Give me the life of luxury. Maybe there is something we can do. Is that this? I never thought I'd need to use this. <laughs> or should I say, a lot stronger. Oh, but you may hurt those little children. I don't care about those little children. I only care about getting out of here before we're both caught. But they may be on the right track. This temporary sheriff, he... <laughs> Doubt me. To her, brains aren't everything. In her case, they're nothing. Don't you think I can stop this so-called temporary sheriff? <laughs> With that real sheriff away and that inexperienced imbecile run around trying to solve things, this place will soon be ours, so long as no one, so long as we do things right, and no one like you spells the beans. <laughs> You know, I'm sure Mrs. Coffee will really appreciate this. She will know, not only appreciate our flower pot, flower pot of coffee cake and coffee beans, she'll enjoy our visit as well. Although I am a little concerned. I may have dropped coins in the batter. Oh no! What can that do? Make the cake too rich. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm sure it'll be okay. Mayor Coffee says his wife is getting better. Well, you know, people are kind of like tea bags. You just don't know how strong they are until you put them in hot water. And honey coffee certainly has the spirit and strength to pull through this nasty illness. Speaking of strong, I'm making a good strong pot of coffee for everybody coming in today. Make sure not to make it too strong. We want to make sure Bunk comes in to enjoy his six cups of coffee. I think that looks okay. Doesn't that look charming? Darling. Auntie, our key is missing. Should we call the locksmith? 
He's our key man in a situation like this. We'll look for it later. I'm sure it will turn up somewhere. It probably fell between the cracks of the counter. Right now, we need to get over to Honey's before her visiting hours are over. We'll just be sure to lock the door. I don't want any mysterious characters coming through. Of course. I'm sure we'll be safe, though, with our doors locked and our temporary chair. <laughs> those fools have left. Little do they know this key works as well coming in as it does going out. <laughs> this is not right. This scheme is much too evil. Nothing can ever be too evil, and you are not fortunate enough to be a part of something especially abominable. So just remember, anything happens to me, I'll make sure everyone knows you're in on it. Being here makes you an accomplice, so just shut up and watch me add a bit of zesty venomous seasoning to the coffee pot. <laughs> I am now a seasoned veteran. This coffee's only good for its sentimental value. <laughs> One sip from this poison pot and you're in the ground. <laughs> You can never take too many steps when obtaining money. Even when I stole a ladder, I knew the additional steps could be taken. Ah, oh, ah, oh, very funny. What do you intend to do now? Don't worry. I'm handling everything. Oh, you are mad. Your only plan is to be, oh, 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 evil. The point is, I am brilliantly evil. Nothing will get in the way when the railroad comes to town and me making a fortune. Everything comes together for Mo Cabana! Curses! This Fifi idiot's losing her train of thought. I've got to make sure she doesn't take me down the wrong track. <laughs> yes! I've got to get her out of here! Hurry! Get her out of here! You can't make me! If you want those children you care about so much to be safe, you'll leave here at once! Oh, God. Now, who could that be? <laughs> Oh, I'm glad I was able to get you, MD. Well, I'm glad too. I'll get you your morning cup. Oh, no, 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 no. That's okay. That's not really why I'm here. I want to talk to you about something. Something kind of private like. Well, I kind of wondered why you wanted me to come back here with you and not start. Oh, uh, I've been thinking a lot about your niece. And yet you've never asked her out. You do know that girls who aren't asked eventually start feeling outdated. But Cameron Pumpy Espresso every day has been like a million days to start. Talking with her, looking into her twinkling eyes, drinking the coffee she makes especially for me. Only I could experience a kiss. At least I came close. Yeah. Well, what can I do for you, bud? Well, Andy. I figure I want to do this as proper as any man should. So here goes. <laughs> and me, can I have Star's hand in marriage? For hand? For heaven's sake, will you have the whole kit kimono? I would be proud to have you as a nephew in law. Well, 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 I don't know how long I'll be in law. Unfortunately, the title of temporary sheriff. <laughs> Isn't known for being a long-term position. Well, no matter how long your job as temporary sheriff lasts. I know that you're going to be a wonderful husband. Well, I do appreciate that, Andy. I really do. What? I think I'm going to do my rounds around town, and when I see her, I'm going to ask her. Dad, this imbecile's always making things more difficult for me. I need to get back to Honey's and see how she's reacting to her flower pot full of coffee cake. 
I cannot wait to hear your proposal. You know what? I can hardly wait to propose. <laughs> this is terrible. When Buck and Star together, it'll be next to impossible for me to obtain the Pony Expresso. Now's my chance to use even more of my ingenious ability to do evil. <laughs> a little bit of forgery never hurt anybody. When I was posing as a blacksmith and stealing horses, I used to forge strong links with my customers. <laughs> Indeed, you think I can get a couple of people in? Can't I get any privacy around here? This place is practically fine anyways. Okay, come on in. Okay. I'm so glad I caught you on the way to the coffee house. It seems like those visiting hours, they just ended so quickly. I know Mrs. Coffee really enjoyed her basket of cake and beans. Did Buck enjoy the cup of coffee he came in for? Is my coffee so bad that he has to ask my aunt for one? Oh, I know he did. And you know what? I think that we should celebrate honey pulling through this sticky illness with a hot cup of coffee from the Pony Espresso. That'd be great, Dee. What a good idea, oh. Dee. Well, that's mighty kind of you, Dee. And, well, I just want to thank everybody here for your help in the election. As, as returning mayor of Water Pit, I'm planning on building a two-story courthouse. Why? Because I like high offices. <laughs> you know, I once knew a mayor. He had a parrot that swallowed a watch. Oh my, how is the parrot? Polly ticks. <laughs> you know, I once saw a cow swallow a spoon. Well, wait a minute, did the cow die? Hasn't stirred it since. <laughs> A patient once brought me a pig that couldn't make a sound. What was your diagnosis? Disgruntled. <laughs> wait a minute, wait, wait. Where's sugar and spice? Oh, don't worry, they're out playing in that. Well, wait a minute, there's horses out back there. I mean, horses have been known to cause people a lot of woe. <laughs> They are really quite good with the horses, you know. And speaking of good, it's really great to see you here, Barb. Yes, Barb, how did you get off work? Well, Bill and Rusty, they're back on their feet again. Master Blend no longer needs me at the ranch. Are you going to be okay, Barb? Dear, how can we help you? Is everything all right? I'll be all right. In fact, you folks are the best friends a person could ever have. So, I'd like to make toast. Oh, oh a toast. toast. Oh, okay. To my family, Bob Hey, Bob. Hey, Bob. Howdy, everyone. Well, howdy, Bob. Hello, Bob. Ah, ha, ha. Short-term law enforcement. Put it there, now. <laughs> Why is temporary Sheriff Buck? So tell me, Buck, have you found anything about the poisoning? Been on my horse all day. Haven't got any leads. You must be exhausted. Can I get you a cup of coffee? That'd be wonderful, Star. Though, I don't think I can drink much more of the black stuff. I'd tell her that I don't want to hurt her feelings. That's a lot. Here you go, Buck. Just the way you like it. Oh, I can only hope that I'm making this man the cup of coffee that he deserves. Much obliged, Star. Well, you know, everybody, I think things have really calmed down here in Water Pit. And uh, I think my wife, Honey, is going to be back on her feet, buzzing around the house in no time. Well, I'm not an expert, Mayor, but whatever hit Honey hit her pretty hard. I wouldn't rush her back to full recovery just quite yet. Well, 
Hill and Rusty, them working hands, they're back on their feet. They obviously made a remarkable recovery. Really, just like the whole town of Waterpit. Oh, I wouldn't be too sure about that. We don't know who or what is responsible for all that poisoning. I just think it's important to think positive. I agree. I'm not going to be able to send a beer in water pit unless I'm thinking positive. So, I'd like to make another toast. Hey, hey, hey. Here's to making positive. Responsibility, girls. Don't worry, we're a big gardeners. We'll certainly weed them and read. <laughs> I am so proud of both of you girls. Why, you're just sprouting with maturity. That's right, that's right. And carrots are mighty important for the eye. Bad eyesight can be awfully costly. Oh, well, so? I once had a patient who had four boys, all with bad eyesight. He found out that sunglasses are mighty expensive. <laughs> well, taking on a formidable project like that tells me that my little girls are growing up. This is me, Trigger on can have a first cup of coffee. Please, well, 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 you have a well, well, for saying, saying we're grown up, sorta. Of. Uh, Please. Oh, all right, all right, okay. I think uh, you're probably just old enough to have your first sip of coffee, so here you go. Why does she always get to go first? Because she's the oldest! Only by three minutes is not fair! Sugar, stop your caterpillar. To keep things fair, you can have a sip of mine, and that way everybody will sip at the same time. Sugar, spice, why don't each of you make a little toast? Read 
Dear Mr. Cabana, I just found out that the hideous Buck Braun plans to ask for Star's hand in marriage. With this relationship, I will surely be set aside, never getting a chance to buy my very own wash and wear bare skin rug. I wouldn't write anything as horrible as that, except maybe that part about the wash and wear bare skin rug. I have always dreamed of one of those. <laughs> go on, read on. I can't go on. <gasps> then you're reading. You're good at public speaking. <laughs> well, I, well, yes, I am. Right? <coughs> After Buck mysteriously dies, I will send my niece to live with her Aunt B. Pony Express will then be firmly in my hands. Not only that, without a temporary sheriff, there will be no one to investigate the matter. It is then that you and I can get married. Huh? Would you want to marry me? And run the Pony Express together? I wouldn't bring anything as horrible as that. How did you even know there was a note behind the counter? Yeah. I saw Buck and D in here just moments ago. When I came in, she handed me this letter. I went ahead and read it, and I handed her back this horrible letter. And I saw her put it behind the counter. I told you not to do anything that went against the laws of this fine land. When you refused, I went to look for our temporary sheriff. <laughs> but unfortunately, I was too late. But I can help by informing our town of the railroad of our town's problems. I'm sure they would want me to run the Pony Expresso. Let me see that. I just don't understand how this can be. It's in my handwriting. Because you wrote it, you scheming villainous. Auntie would never write such a thing. Look, <laughs> Ron, I love a temporary kid. that this man is not dead. <laughs> However, he does have a serious coffee allergy. Coffee allergy? Yes, a coffee allergy. What should I do, Doc? I think you should drink a bucket of water. But drinking a bucket of water would make me turn pale. <laughs> How about if you stick to tea? Oh, thank you, Doctor. You scoundrel! Oh, Cabana, you're under arrest! 
You can't arrest me. You're a Pony Express rider, not a sheriff. <laughs> not so, Cabana. I've been after you for years. You're not just talking to Palomino Polly. You're talking to Marshall Palomino Polly. <laughs> Is it really true you kissed me? 
Why, yes, Buck. My lips were upon your cheeks. Will you marry me, Star? She can only say yes on one condition. What's that? that? Well, what with all the businesses going to be coming our way with the railroad? We need some help around here, Buck. I would be mighty honored to have you become part of the family business. Well, thanks, Andy. That, that means a lot to me. But I, I don't think I could start until I found Mr. Donetta of the Blazing Ranch Hand. Ooh, but Barb could do it. Well, that's a great idea. How about it, Barb? Wow! That would be great. I'll just go hop on Java and go introduce ourselves. Good luck, Barb. Tell Mr. Donetta I'm saying hello. the Pony Express stop for the town of Waterpit, I figured we should give our coffee shop a new name. What's that? Hogstar's Coffee. And tea? But I think your name should come first. Why, that's sweet of you, but who's ever heard of Starbucks? <laughs> anyway, I think Buck Stars has a nice ring to it. And speaking of rings, my star. Awesome. 